Guys, let's act like we know what we're doing here. We are here. It is session two for our Curse of Strahd uh, run through, and we're excited. Uh, I think yeah. everybody's, everybody's got some excitement. Um, pre chat, pre post, pre stream chat has been uh, lively and and fun. So that's good. We're gonna relay that to you all. But let's get through housekeeping stuff as we do here. Uh, we are Featherfall Tabletop. This is Curse of Strahd. We have a couple sponsors that we want to tell you about. We have Found Familiar Coffee uh, pumping out some awesome uh, bags of coffee for you. You can use our code Featherfall at checkout for ten percent discount. They have a, a whole line of Devin Rue inspired uh, cover art mugs and stuff. There, I don't know which one to pick, but uh, you know, next payday coming. Got to give me one of them. So check those out. Ten percent discount using code uh, Featherfall. We are also sponsored by Skull Splitter Dice. You can use, again, that same code, Featherfall, at checkout for 10% off. They have, I haven't seen, oh, they had some special New Year's dice come out that you might want to check out. They were kind of like uh, a celestial blue, kind of really cool looking. Um, but yeah, you can use that code, Featherfall, for uh, save yourself 10%. We have a one shot coming up. The DM is here at this table. Uh, it is called Pressure Cooker on the 25th with Adam. Uh, you want to give a little plug for that? We'll put you on the spot. Adam. Uh, yeah, it's it's on the twenty fifth. Um, I believe uh, six o'clock Pacific. Um, I'm basically <laughs> going to try to murder the the PCs. They're they're going to um, they're going to investigate a wizard's tower that is pumping out a lot of fog, and uh, the people of the town are not happy about the fog rolling in. Um, so yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Magical stuff happening. Yeah. Nice. I'm actually in on that. I can't wait. <laughs> nice. <Yes! laughs> That's going to be awesome. All right. Um, bring a little bit of Strahd with you. Uh, so if you want to join in those one shots, uh, easiest way to do that is join our Discord down below and uh, tell us you want in, and we'll get you into the private chat that gets you hooked up with all those games. We have a game opening up in Bob Windsor game, end of March. Starting of April, I think it's at the beginning of April. So we are a, we are kind of uh, scheduled out for a couple months here, but no better time than right now if we get an influx of people going. I want in. Well, who knows? We might get a, a game off the cuff for you, but we will. Uh, yeah, I, I forgot what I was going to say. I lost it there. But one shots. Join our Discord. We'll let you know. Uh, they're they're pretty good fun. Uh, T Guac, the gods we know, otherwise known as. Uh, they're playing on Tuesday, January 14th. A little earlier start time. Is that what I heard through the grapevine, Adam? Uh, I, I think that's in the works. We might okay. we might actually start at 6 o'clock instead of okay. oh, 6 Pacific. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see. Right. We'll see. Yeah. Get yourself in on that uh, Teague action on Tuesday. Teague action Tuesdays. Um, everybody's doing it. That brings us to this game. This is Curse of Strahd. This is session two. A welcome to Barovia. Won't you be my neighbor? Uh, we have a very special sponsor. Not very special. Equally in the special. But they are... That is Roll20. Uh, they have uh, sponsored this playthrough of Curse of Strahd. And we are grateful to them for that. So you could go check them out. Roll20.net for all your uh, digital tabletop gaming needs. Uh, this is how we roll. That's their, that's their tagline. So I thought I'd say it, but that's uh, that's it for housekeeping. Any any good of the order stuff? Now it's time for the last we left our heroes. Uh, <laughs> we will jump right in. Last we left our heroes, you guys were uh, propositioned by uh, Duchess Marwin to get rid of some some trash that was kind of outside of the gates of Daggerford, um, kind of um, harassing some of the other denizens coming and going from Daggerford. Uh, asking for wine and coin and just being a general nuisance. She brought you in, um, all being in her court for different reasons. She knew she could trust all of you and brought you in to uh, help alleviate this problem. Uh, you had some dinner bowl, uh, did some, some knife tricks for you, and then you went on your way down the road and met the, uh, the, the caravan of people headed by uh, Stanimir. And he he welcomed you with open arms and danced around the fire. And you, you, some of you joined, some a little 
more reluctantly. <laughs> but uh, you you had a good good time maybe with uh, Stanmere, and he regaled you with some stories about a fallen master and um, how Madame Eva is uh, needs you for help in uh, curing their lord uh, back at home. And they promised you horses if you came and did so, and that has yet to be paid up because during your night's travel, uh, a mysterious mist and fog came into the air and engulfed all of you and seemingly transported you to a different plane of existence where um, a pretty high uh, nature check on the, the star uh, patterns re revealed that you are no longer on the Sword Coast. You are somewhere else uh, yet to be determined. I think officially and there you came across uh gates that led into this um that were uh shielding off the other side of this road you heard some some wolves in the distance by uh after your what was it a flute it was a horn <laughs> it was a horn of course uh bull would not play a flute it would definitely be a horn uh, <laughs> uh a horn toot in the middle of the night uh triggered off some wolves sounding in the distance you all walked through the gate again some more reluctantly than others um and as soon as you did so the gates closed behind you and that is where we left off did i miss anything good i don't believe I think so. we were all going to describe our characters again yeah no so <laughs> <laughs> um yeah, let's go. Let's go around. <laughs> let's see. Yeah, I'm wearing nothing. Uh, let's go around the horn uh, one time and and kind of remind us who your character is, their name, um, as much of their race and class that you want to reveal, but a, a, just a general description of how they look, so that we're we're in good hands. Uh, Cam, we'll we'll start with you. Caught you mid cough. I was gonna say perfect, perfect, perfect timing, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, cool. I am playing Cascada <laughs> Vendril, uh, Water Genasi. Uh, yeah, quite simple um, outfit. Uh, just general kind of quite long, very covered robes, uh, very long sleeves, uh, coming down almost like towards hereish. Quite long hair, um, kind of a mixture of general kind of seaweed colors. He's he's he's, he's a water boy. Uh, <laughs> Um, slightly uh, pricked up elvish ears, um, not massively so though. Um, darker skin, quite well built, but not massively so. Um, yes, uh, and his usual wooden circlet that he is not seen without and even sleeps with. So, yeah, that pretty much sums up Cass. Nice. Thank you. Uh, Bob, tell us about um, Avi. Yeah, Avi Toast. Uh, Fire Genasi and... So I have a short kind of bowl cut. It's not not a bowl cut, but it is short hair. <laughs> um, and I wear blue uh, tunic with blue, you know, leather pants. And uh, I mean, my skin is is mainly reddish. Um, some some tints of orange, but uh, all right, nice. Uh, Dax. Uh, okay, so I am playing Myrna, playing Myrna Elisand. Uh She is a bronze dragonborn with um, she's about six foot two, hundred and eighty pounds. Bright green eyes, horns that jut backwards. Uh, she is actually dressed in quite a bit of chainmail and cleric's robes, and she carries a shield that is decorated with a uh, arm made of silver. Nice. Awesome. Uh, Adam, to you. All right. Uh, Bull is a Eldrin. It's like a subclass of elf. He's uh, got sandy brown hair, a little uh, twinge of like green to his, his skin. And he's got you know, like leather armor and like dark brown pants. He's wearing a, a belt that's like a little bit too big, um, but he's got some like daggers and his sword. Uh, sheathed in there and um i guess it's got like some like crazy green eyes and that's about it yeah yeah got it awesome thanks uh jason so i am playing tech the changeling warlock um currently i'm <clears throat> under the persona of 
Uh, Zircon Wooding, uh, a middle-aged elf, a little on the pudgy side. Um, he has a scroll case at his hip, um, and his hands are stained with ink. Uh, he's got uh, long hair that's kind of slicked back, uh, and generally a sour disposition on his face. <laughs> that we've come to love already. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jason. Uh, so th that is our crew of uh, players here. I uh, appreciate it. Uh, so, picking up where we left off, you guys have just come into the gates, through the gates of where you're at. I, I think I think Barovia, the name Barovia was dropped, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, Stanimir said the words Barovia. Um, so yeah. what you can assume is Barovia. You have walked through the gates. Um, again, just you are on this path that is kind of clouded, shrouded by trees. It's it's a pretty tight path, not a lot of room on either side. Um, with these towering trees, all the tops of them are just lost in this heavy gray mist kind of fog that was once at uh, Tax Heels before you walked into the uh, the gates and then has, has since risen to the top. It's uh, All the tree trunks are unnaturally close. It's hard to get a straight line of sight through there, so it looks very dense of a forest. Um, very quiet. Uh, there is still the occasional howl of, of a wolf uh, in, the, in the very far distance, um, one that you, uh, you heard earlier before you walked through the, uh, through the gates. Um, what would you guys, what would uh, the party like to do? I should say this too, it is kind of like, it is like two or three in the morning. It is getting rather late. And with, I mean, mechanically speaking, we are pushing up to, uh, you know, um, exhaustion, point of exhaustion if something's not taken. <laughs> That's just what we need here, I think. <laughs> Make it harder. <laughs> That's what we're I need do. to be scared and exhausted, yeah. Well, so I mean, you would say when we were in the van or in the caravan sleeping, we didn't get long enough to uh, have a full rest. No, that that would yeah, that was only like an hour or two. Well, yeah, but it seemed like forever. <laughs> <laughs> I probably at this point would stop now that the iron gates have closed behind us, and looking at the dense fog in the forest and hearing wolves in the distance, I'm guessing probably beyond the gates that we just came through, uh, would turn to the rest of the company and, and say, I do not know about you, but I, uh, I think it would be smart to camp at least for a few hours and get some rest. I do not care to walk in the dark in an unknown territory. As much as, uh, I don't exactly like this particular area. Having something large and difficult to pass at our backs would mean that we're not going to get snuck on by anything nasty during the night, so... Exactly. Inclined to agree. I think I'm okay with that. Um, I mean, we did see a building, or what we think is a building, not too far down the road. I got the impression it was like a silhouette in the far distance, but I might be wrong. I think that was... I think that was before you crossed the gates. Okay. As you, that okay. the the silhouette was the gotcha. the towering gates that. Uh, oh, okay. That, that makes sense. So. Well, um, then may, maybe we do just camp here. Best is, you know, best place is any, I suppose. It's outside. Why? Why would we? Outside. <gasps> yes. Well, I don't I see. Do, would you like me to build do you, you have a, a sleeping tent? bag? I do don't have a sleeping bag. bag. Did you bring a tent? I don't have a tent. Yeah, I'm uh, gonna go ahead and side <laughs> with Tack here. Let's, uh, we got gold, right? Let's, we can buy a room. And where is the nearest tower? Do you know that? Uh, I do not. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and look around, see if I can perceive anything. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're on a road, right? The road has to go somewhere. <laughs> yeah, you are on on a road, and and as you are on the other side of the gates now, you see it does kind of jog to the uh, what would be your left. So it kind of starts to take a southern turn, and uh, still sticks. It's very um, 
narrow corridor of trees for about as far as you can see. Um, you can give me a perception check if you want to try to figure out the exact distance. That'd be a uh, B. <laughs> I was going to say, Dax, I didn't get what you rolled. I said, that's a six for me. Okay. I I went ahead and rolled a 22. Whoa, holy. What is this, Jack of all trades? Not yet, but soon. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, so, Bull, as you're, like, really not wanting to stay out in the the woods without a bed, um, you can tell... The uh, that corridor starts to open up uh, a mile or so down the line, down this road, and you could just kind of catch just the glimpse of where what is all shadowed, then kind of opens up into a, a wider spread. About a mile well, and a half. <clears throat> well, it looks about a, a fifteen minute walk. If we just hoof it, we can clear these uh, these woods here, and uh, hopefully the town's right around the corner. I believe uh, it's around this uh, dog leg. Hell. And yeah. if it is not? Well, if it's not, then um, I guess we can camp outside. So it's all the same, right? I'm going to just huff at that and make a low guttural growl in my throat. I mean, do you really want to sleep outside if we could just walk like 15 minutes and sleep inside? Well, I don't normally sleep inside anyway, so I'm perfect. That's fine weird. Here. I have spent many a night on this stars. It does not matter to me. People camped before we had houses. There's yes, no need to camp, camp even when even we have those. Have houses, so. But I am willing at least to try. Let's just give it a 15 minute walk, see if we find something. If not, I'll concede we can sleep outside at that point. All right. I'll start the 15 minute timer right now. Very well. I was going to say, we like, we're like literally a minute past the 15 minute mark to get to the tavern, and Myrna's like, nope, sorry. <laughs> See it. Minutes, that was it. <laughs> you got like pace beads. Like yep. The military uses. <laughs> um, all right, so is, is, every, is this agreeable to everybody? Yeah, I think so. All right. So yeah, you guys start heading through, heading down this road. It, it kind of does dog, dag leg uh, down. And heads towards the south a little bit. Um, you guys can give. Who's what? What are the marching orders here? Well, I think whoever wants to not camp outside first. <laughs> it's just my bet. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bull can. He'll be walking up front, and he's right. kind of yeah. like, <laughs> kind of doing like a tour tour guide thing, where he's like pointing at the woods and he's telling a little story about a. Uh, his his recent encounter with a with a tree ant. <laughs> I'll probably be bringing up the rear and I would be uh, carrying my war hammer, keeping an eye out for danger. Okay, uh, Bull, as you're up front, go ahead and uh, give me a perception check as you're <laughs> showing the signs. Uh, of... That is a fourteen. Ooh, uh, with that fourteen, you. As you're kind of pointing and and looking off to uh, your left or. Uh, Say to your right. You see, you catch in the briefest space between two trees a shadow pass by. <laughs> where, where as you're looking, where there was a little bit of moonlight coming down, it it goes dark for a second and then comes back. Into the, it's in the woods to your right. Probably about 30, 30, 50, 30, 40 feet in that direction. How how long have we been walking uh, i'm gonna say about like 10 minutes okay you can you've gotten a each each hex on this map is a quarter mile and you you guys have moved one hex i'll say that's i would say quarter mile 10 minutes gotcha especially if well, you're uh, dang i don't want to be uh that guy that to say we got trouble but i think we we got some trouble so um perhaps we should uh make haste and giddy up you said trouble. What kind of trouble? Uh, of the of the shadowy nature. I just saw it between the trees. I don't. I didn't get a good look at it. I was regaling y'all with the tale of 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 great deeds. So uh, you know, I couldn't. I didn't have my complete attention. And as as you're explaining this, you see two two more 
kind of shadows go fill in the void and then go and then another one right behind it. As he says that, can I try and look in that yeah, direction? Yeah, yeah, he's kind of pointing in that direction. You can give me perception check. 23. Yeah, you definitely see those those two shadows. They are, and I'll say you can kind of get a better look. Um, they are humanoid. Uh, bipedal. Moving. They're moving parallel to you. They're not, they're not coming near you or away, but they're moving parallel in the same direction. I'm going to cast a cantrip, produce flame. I'm going to take a step into off the path into that direction. Okay. Uh, so as you sir, keep low. Um, hello. <laughs> what, what is the, what's the, the radius on a... Uh, 60 it, foot dim light. Okay. As you do that, you see this uh, a taller than a, a normal average human, taller... And kind of lumbering almost, got a kind of shoulders hunched forward, long arms, kind of stops it in mid stride, and it is the back of the three. And it kind of turns and looks over its shoulder at you. And as it does that, you can see kind of um, spines coming out of its shoulder and down its arm. And. There are, like, its its arms are made up of, like, twisted wood that is, that you can tell, and, and it builds up into a spiny kind of uh, carapace, almost shoulder piece that goes up and around its back, and it turns and looks at you. Do you want to do anything? Oh, hello? It, yeah, it, that it, looks in trouble. It turns and, and keeps, it's lumbering in the same direction. I'll take one more step in... Who are you yelling hello to? Um, and I'm going to say there's three of them out there. Not quite sure what, what they are yet, but... Uh, what do they look like? Um, well, taller than us. Not me? human. Uh, uh, Bull is going to cast a uh, uh, fairy fire on these things. Can I? Can I? Okay. Uh... They're about 60 feet from where you are off the path and about 40 feet from uh, to Avi. So I don't, I don't know what the, uh, the range is the range, on very far. The range is 60. Um, okay, so the the, bo I, the back one is right at the edge of that range. All right, I'll, I'll move closer to Avi so I can try to get all of them and okay. uh, cast Fairy Fire. Okay. Oh, nuts to this. <laughs> and we're all dead. What a, what is fairy fire? I think it just eliminates uh, it's a, them. Yeah, it's a deck save. Deck save, or uh, they're just they're just illuminated. Uh, I mean, yeah. If you don't want to contest it, then yes. <laughs> no, uh, I I will be contesting. All right. All right. It's a it's a deck save of thirteen. Thirteen. Yeah. Yeah, that hits all of them. So Woo! just. What what does your fairy fire look like as it's moving through? Uh, it's it's kind of like a little disco lighty. Um, so it's just like swirling rainbow colors around from head to toe. And All right. yeah, go ahead. All right, yeah, just kind of spinning through the woods, and and it's, yeah. it has to move side to side to kind of dodge and and make this little path. Uh, and just doo, 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 hits onto the back shoulders of all three of them. And at that point, they do plant their feet and turn around and look at you now. And, and Avi and Bull, you can see them now. Um, their, their whole body is made up of these twisting kind of roots that are building up into a torso and then kind of expand down into their arms. And their face is like one bark piece of bark almost like Groot <laughs> but a whole lot more evil no, looking no, they do, no, sorry they do have like a spiky kind of hair that's not hair but it's the same spikes that are on their shoulder and they are now lumbering towards you uh I think this is our first initiative roll so let's do that oh see shit. what you did <laughs> the um, tree ants the tree ants relatives have come back <laughs> No shit. All right. So these creatures are 40 feet from um, 
Avi and Bolt. And the first one, let's see. It is the one closest. He is going to move his full movement and get 10 feet in front of you, Avi. Actually, he's going to do a uh, bowl because you're the one that shot these twinkling lights at him. He is going to do... Um, he kind of turns his shoulder and you can see his arm pulse and needles come flying out towards you. Uh, that's a natural one. So, <laughs> way to go. Uh, they just... They just hit right into the ground, right at your feet. Just two, 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 three needles, just boom, boom, make um, you dance. Well, oh, we're gonna die. Level one, y'all. Cass has. Cass, it is your turn. Okay, um, I am gonna go ahead and use my full, uh, uh, my full uh, thirty feet of movement. Okay. To get right up in there. Yeah, so and you're then, about you close the distance. You're about uh Oh, you can yeah, you can get right to him. You can get in melee yeah. with him if you'd like. Yeah, yeah, I'm just going to rush forward okay. straight to him. Uh and then I'm going to be really extra. Um <laughs> <clears throat> essentially, uh, I pull my weapon, uh which is a, a wooden trident with uh no blades at the po at the top. They're just like uh three tiny little spikes essentially. Uh, I pull my sleeve up, I grab my trident, and just jam it straight into my arm and let the blood drip down, twist it round. The blood drips down the blade and meets at the middle before I cast Shake Water. I pull the water from the blood up and freeze it, activating my right of the frozen. Yeah. Awesome. And then smack the guy. <laughs> All right. Yeah, give me a give me an attack roll. Let's, uh, let's do this. Uh, everybody has fairy fire. It's an advantage. Oh, so you have advantage. Good. Yeah, they're all three lit. Uh, plus. Uh, oh, that's that's a good plus. Uh, sixteen. Yeah, that hits. Sweet. Uh, I'm using it with two hands, by the way. Okay. Just so that's understood. All right, give me the, yeah, give me that damage roll. <laughs> Bold does not save the day. <laughs> <laughs> you were the chosen one. And is there any other light in this area? Uh, no, once you've kind of stepped into the woods, I mean, there is a little bit, just pockets here and there that can come down and break through of the pale moonlight that is up above you, but not like a, a reliable source. And then we say. have the fairy fire. And, but the fairy fire is kind of illuminating. Okay. Um, around cool. you. Uh, damage rolls, uh, seven points of piercing damage and two points of cold damage. All right. Yeah, so it, it takes it, you can see, now that you're in its face, you can tell these things are made of wood um, and they're very viney, root-like that are just twisted in making this humanoid kind of figure. And it just starts freezing all of those roots and chunks start breaking off and it kind of like crumbles down a little bit. It's not prone or anything, but it is kind of like shrinking in size as that uh, that that frozen uh, touch comes into him. Um, that leads us to... Anything else, Cass? Use your movement uh, action. That is pretty much all I can do right now. So, right. Uh, Crimson Right is a uh, bonus action. So Okay. So the other uh, hulking figure behind him lumbers forward, and he's going to get into melee with you, and he brings up his... This, huge claw of a hand and he's just going to try to swipe down over you do they have disadvantage on attacks or is it with the fairy fire nope Oop, that jump uh, uh, that is a 19 to hit uh yeah i think that'll do it <laughs> barely that is going to be three points of piercing damage as this claw this huge like it's almost like a tree trunk, it, these vines kind of get come into a wooden paddle almost and just <laughs> kind of slaps over your face. And that's its turn. Ouch. But, okay. That leads us to Myrna. All right, so I would like to move as close as I can to the nearest, whatever these are. Oh, and I just moved my token underneath whoever's green, so I apologize oh, no. for that. Um, but I'm going to reach up and kind of slam the butt of my warhammer against my hip as I cast Divine Favor. 
and I would like to take a swipe at whatever it is, and okay, I'm very you, terrified for it. Uh, do you want the one that's been damaged, or the the one that just joined the, the fray there? The one that just joined the fray. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that would be an 18. That hits. Yes. All right, so that's D4 plus D8 damage. Um, that is nine points. Uh, six points of bludgeoning and three points of radiant damage on this. Six and three? Yep. Got it. Okay. Yeah, so uh, again, he's looking a lot like his uh, counterpart there. Just not frozen, but just huge chunks of like brittle uh, roots are just breaking off as your uh, weapon comes in and, and deals a ton of damage on him. Right. Anything else? No, that'll be it for me. All right. Uh, attack. That leaves us to you. Am I actively in melee range? With you are 30 feet outside of it. Okay, so I'm going to move back 30 okay. feet. <laughs> to the right. uh, far away tactically as possible. Okay. Um, and uh, I'm going to bring my hand up and just gesture almost nonchalantly um, and let fly an Eldritch Blast right. at the one that Myrna just hit. I'm, I'm going to say... Since you're moving away and they are kind of in coverage, that they're, the, I'll give them half coverage so that we'll give them a plus two. Okay. I was going to go a normal roll for you, but I think half coverage is mechanically sure. That's more correct. So, yeah, a plus two to their armor, but go ahead. Um, and you have advantage. Right. So, first roll is a 23, which I think will probably be enough, but yeah, go for that now, though. The second one is only a 13. So. Yeah, that 23 definitely hits. And You've got nice uh, control over your Eldritch Blast as it's coming out. You're able to, just like those uh, fairy lights, fairy fire. And that's four points of force damage. Yeah, that's enough to uh, that's enough to uh, eliminate this guy. And then my bonus action, um, I gesture again with the other hand, almost in an, an offhand, nonchalant manner, um, and a tentacle grows up out of the ground, big water snake looking tentacle, uh, and is going to slap the one that what our um our There's there's one that's damaged that's engaged yep, with that ball. Okay. That's what I'm does to this hit. does this tentacle come out of the fallen foe or is it It just comes up out of the ground like okay. a all puddle appears on the ground at its feet and it just awesome. ripples up out of the puddle. Um, and I, breaks at it. Cass hasn't learned about um, this before. <laughs> and let's see. Only in Barovia. Melee spell <laughs> hit, so that is a yeah. 16, and advantage is, that is a 15. Yeah, it, uh, the 16 hits, and no no addition to their armor since you're in melee. All right, um, and that's going to be seven points of lightning damage. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> so this one is the same one that was... Uh, frozen and that frozen and the lightning just totally crackle and it's just and it exits its body it's like that electricity has to go somewhere it's going through the extensions of its hand and it kind of lights up the uh, the interior of the jungle or not the jungle we're not in Chult uh, interior of the forest a little bit and and then immediately dies as this one crumbles down into a fallen uh, pile of kindling and then I'll say can we, can we keep to the road <laughs> <laughs> oh, anything else, uh, Tack? That's it for me. All right. Uh, Avi, that's to you. 30 feet in front of you is a the, the last standing hulking creature illuminated by the, the fairy fire. The flame that's in my hand that I produce, I'm just going to arch back and just throw it at him. Um, okay. Uh, what do you got? That's a uh, 14. 14 hits. I didn't think I'd hit. It's just a straight D8. Five points of fire damage. Ooh. Uh, I got math is hard, guys. Yeah. Um, there we go. All right. Yeah, so this flame kind of hits. Um, oddly enough, they're not... They don't have any fire bonuses. I'm gonna, and I'm going to take yeah. uh, 10 feet of movement back. Okay. Oh, you bastard. Uh, yeah, so he's 
<laughs> lumbering to you, and he closes that, and he's ten feet out from you. Again, kind of turns his shoulder and flexes, and he's going to shoot some needles at you, Avi. Uh, let's see if I can get an actual hit. Uh, not in the cards tonight. That is a nine. Yeah, not. Yeah, just kind of darts into the trees next to you. Um, and that's his turn. Uh, that leads us to Bull. Actually, he would have been in melee with Bull, but he was he wanted the the fire guy. Was so he is okay. he isn't in melee with you. Okay. Uh, well, Bull will say, "I see your needles, and I raise you hard." Uh, does a twenty hit? Uh, <laughs> oddly enough, yeah, that just nails it. So what what are you doing at him? Uh, uh it's it's a cantrip. It's a cantrip it's called card throw, um, and so I roll a d6, and it, it's a six, so it, it's uh, the damage is psychic damage, and so it's uh, four points of psychic damage. Uh, okay. Ac actually, seven points of psychic damage, sorry. Just have to add my modifier. Seven points, huh? Yeah, that's yeah, enough. And nice. You want to describe that what that card does? Uh, the card, like flips through the air uh, like a plastic bag on the wind and just slaps him right in the face. And it's just embarrassing enough for him to uh, die. <laughs> uh, <aw>. Okay. <laughs> All right, yeah, so <laughs> kind of crumbles down another pile of kindling. Um, as far as you know, that's... There's no other shadows moving out there, so we are technically out of initiative. <clears throat> I want to go up to their bodies and look at them. Yeah. I mean, clearly. Yeah, I would end up doing the same. All right. Uh, yeah, I actually would too. And as uh, uh, when Cass comes up, I'm going to be like, hey, can you do that tentacle thing? I, I was just going to ask, uh, Tack, is your tentacle, does it stay? It yeah, it does stay until, I mean, I guess technically if we're out of combat, um, it will just slither back down into okay. its puddle, um, would you, and the puddle will disappear. Would you demiss it right away, like as it ended, or would you let it linger for a little bit? Uh, I would let it linger until we're pretty sure that nothing else is right. showing up, and then it'll right. just literally slither back into the puddle okay. um, and dissipate. All right, yeah, so this tentacle is kind of up and just... <laughs> scanning the area as everybody comes into these um, these fallen corpses. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Do I've you want to do like an effect? Like <laughs> well, I mean, I'm kind of kind of nervous because I don't want one of those coming after me. Um, but that I do want to okay. just look at the bodies and see if there's anything of note, anything on them. Uh, yeah, as you're kind of picking through the rub rubble they they kind of fall and then almost shatter so they're not like in a t intact but it is like an outline of the humanoid that once was and it is you you pick up a piece it's kind of brittle wood um the the spines up towards its neck and shoulder area are pretty prickly um like a like a briar prick prickle um needle and then they do have like sitting on top of that pile is their their face that is basically a piece of bark that almost like the mask in the mask uh it's this wooden kind of but other than that there's no like innards or or body mass to yeah. it it's all it's I'm it is all natural take one of the faces okay and then i'm going to um collect the other bodies and uh, look back at myrna and say we got firewood is that his true uh, it's nice and dry, ready to go. I am glad that all of you can take care of yourselves, but, Paul, do you have to attack everything that you see in the world? Is this going to be a scene that I have to worry about? No. Well, only Avi and I saw creatures, so I was just trying to help the rest of the party to, uh, to not get a snuck attack on leave. <laughs> And Bull is going to grab one of the masks also and just, like, stuff it in his cloak. <laughs> All right. So you two have ornamental wooden masks. You can oh, add yeah. to your inventory. That will be uh, a <laughs> But, uh, 
as far as the fire goes, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep on keeping on, and Bull's gonna well, it's start been walking. Much longer than fifteen minutes at this point. Well, we got ten minutes down the road, didn't we? And then yeah, Bull ten minutes. To attack these things. So then twelve seconds, seconds of combat. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Combat was not even a whole round. No, I think it just went. It was like six and some change seconds. So you are ten minutes six seconds in. Uh, but after the investigation and uh, kind of bundling of the sticks, I'd say you're you're twelve. Bundling <laughs> cool. so that kills two minutes there. I like yeah, it. Yeah, okay. they've got a little, another five minutes. <laughs> All right, so then I'll just start the sticks on fire and we'll walk away. Uh, Torches. I would like to grab a small sample of something before that does happen. Okay. Uh, just something. I don't know, like spines or anything that may be able to use uh, to be used as some kind of like alchemical region. Basically. Okay. Yeah, you can you can definitely get some of the the needles that that adorned its its uh, shoulder blades. Um, if you want to do any kind of thing outside of their body, uh, you can give me a, a nature nature check, and you can see if you can find any. Uh, sure, I'll, I'll I'll do that. Let's do that. A six. I, I don't think I'm good. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're. It's. The trees are pretty. There's not a whole lot of like lichen, moss, mushroom, anything growing really. It's kind of just basic bark that it looks exactly like this pile that's in front of you. So, but the the needles are going to be the most uh, maybe wonderful looking thing that you can grab most readily. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll grab a small handful and keep. keep. All right, staying put, moving forward. I'm I'm moving forward. Uh, We've got I mean, three more minutes left on the clock. we got to see who's right and who's not. Yeah. And uh, probably take the magic man's idea and stick to the road. All right. The magic. I'll, the magic man. That's, that's, that's the nickname now. It's just the magic nice. man. Nice. <laughs> uh, it's okay, Zagal. It's okay. <laughs> I'll use Bull's token as kind of the uh, the token for all as he's uh, leading the, the party here, just so that we're that's the square that... Can't, wasn't there a way you can highlight Multiple. the square? Uh, like, what do you mean, like, like that? Like, well, nah, never mind. It's fine. I'll just use Bull's token as that's where you all are. Um, so you guys, yeah, another another five minutes goes past. You move another quarter mile uh, through again. It's you. I imagine you guys are like checking the areas a little bit more. Um, quiet as a, quiet, quiet as a church mouse. Um, again, same same corridor of trees continuing on you're now pro- i would say you're about 20 25 minutes in another quarter mile forward and you're getting closer to where this opens up and you can now see uh just a vast meadow um in in front of you but you still have probably eighth of a mile or so until you get to that opening of the woods and what what time would you say it is or do we have no uh, like cool. of it's, at this point it's got to be around two thirty ish. That's what it's feeling like. Yeah. Um, can I make a perception check to see what I can see into that meadow? I don't know how far through the trees we uh, can see. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, give me a perception check. Seventeen. That's not bad. Ooh. So as you're looking out, and you're kind of on the edge of the woods, like. And it opens up. You can you hear what would be a river to the uh, to your left, going down the map south. You see the outline, probably about 200, 300 feet down this road. You see the outline of what would be a tall house, singular, by itself, just off off the road. And so I'm going to turn to everybody and say. Yeah, I don't see anything. Um, this is probably the best place to camp. <laughs> well, at least we have some firewood. We can take a nice bus, and it should be... It might be smarter to not stay in the expanse out there. I would agree. More coverage for better safety. Yeah, I'll say you guys move closer to that opening of the uh, woods there. <laughs> um, this little this little red box on the map is nothing. Don't don't worry about that. I tried to clear it. I Ignore the man behind the curtain. Yeah, there's nothing going on here. Um, 
Is there so yeah. are you saying there is a like a hex that fits on the hex grid? I th I thought there was that we were using when we were doing Cholt, but I don't. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, it's fine. Um, but that yeah, that red box I was just playing with stuff. It it's not. There's nothing there. Um, and and I'll say, Avi, as you're looking at, you could barely see the outline. There are no lights on. There's yeah. no. It's just kind of a a, a facade that is b sheer black. Yeah. And then, I'm, yeah. I'm gonna start finding a spot to camp. Um, and then getting getting all the brush and stuff for a, a cozy little fire. Okay. Are you doing this on the road, off into the woods? Uh, I would say probably 20, 30 feet off into the woods. What's everybody else doing? <laughs> the, 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 the dissenting voices here, uh, attack and uh, bowl. What, what would you two be doing? <laughs> you sure you want to fire? Small. Attack. How do you feel about about this? You want to keep on keeping? I mean, we've gone far enough. I. I did agree that we got to this point and didn't see any signs of shelter that I was okay camp. I'm not excited about camping at all, uh, but yeah, I'm getting tired. It's been a long night. Uh, I'm going to find a tree and just lean up against it, sit down, and try and sleep as best I can. Hopefully the sun comes up and the rest of you are still alive. Uh, and, so you know, it's just, it's just my plan for right now. A bull is going to un unfurl his uh, sleeping bag, I guess. And bedroll. And he, bedroll. And he's going to cast Unseen Servant and uh, <laughs> to, give, to give him a, a little like massage as he's like trying to go to sleep. <laughs> Kane, <laughs> Kane, like, come here. Get my, get my shoulders. I got a knot in there. <laughs> uh, Cass, what, what, what are you, what are you doing? How are you approaching this uh, campsite? <clears throat> it's been a while since Cass has been hurt, so he's kind of trying to shrug it off as if it's nothing. But he's, he's, he's not particularly happy about the situation right now. Uh, yeah, he's going to go ahead, deactivate his Crimson Right, chuck his Trident back on his belt. Um, stay close enough that everyone can be seen, but kind of take a bit of a backseat and uh, waste a little bit of time just uh, pulling a small, like, ornate little... Uh, uh, almost like a, a flask, but far okay. more ornate than the first one. And just kind of pull the water out of it, swirl it around for a little while, and just kind of, yeah, waste a bit of time before okay. settling in. All right. And do you have a bedroll? Do you have, you making another ice ice bed? Yeah, when it, when, it comes to, when it comes to the point, I'll just freeze a block, and then okay. it only lasts an hour, but I'll be asleep by then, so it just kind of goes to okay. water, pull it back out. Great. Awesome. Uh, Myrna, how are you approaching this camp? Well, Avi already has the fire going, so is Cass the only one hurt? Yeah, I think these uh, <laughs> these needle blights didn't do any damage. Too much. <laughs> Other than um, self -inflicted, I'll but. walk over to Cass then. And say, you look like you could use some assistance. Would you mind if I help you? And I'll cast <laughs> Cure Wounds at first level on Cass. So that's nice. 1d8 plus filler. Now, do I roll that or you? It's up to you guys. Me? All right. Yeah. Yeah, we'll First let the cast. playing a spellcaster, folks. <laughs> um, all right, so that will be <laughs> uh, 10. Wow. Okay, yeah, that'll you work. <laughs> you got Feeling all your better than I was before. Like, Get all your hearts back. <laughs> boop, 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 boop. All right. Um, uh, and then after that, I probably would just, uh, like Zircon, sit up against a tree so that I could kind of keep a watch on everybody else. Okay. And then Av Avi, are you close to the fire? Are you kind of... Yeah, I'm going to be like... I'm going to be like... Tend tending. Uh, I'll fall asleep like inches from the fire. All right. Well, Cinderella there. All right. Are you all just nobody on watch? Just... No, we're good. <laughs> no, I, I'm watching. Okay, all right. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> is everybody else falling asleep? Yeah. Going going down all right 
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna send uh, Kane over to uh, Mirna to like give her a little like hand massages while she's watching. Now, so this is an <laughs> invisible thing, right? Unseen servant is unseen. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the minute <laughs> this thing touches me, I start like swatting. <laughs> what, where is it? what? 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 Like, oh, oh, don't mind Kane. He's just there to to give you a little massage while you. Uh, I, while you I am good. Please just get get go away. Just go. all right. Well, I've got him for another about four to five minutes. If anybody wants a little, <laughs> little pick me up. No. All right. That's just me then. <laughs> no takers. All right, <laughs> uh, Myrna, no. Myrna, you're. Uh, Two hours go by as you're kind of, you know, the un- the uncertainty of servant goes away. The fire kind of dwindles down. You can see uh, Cass's bed of ice start to kind of dissipate and and go back into the earth and, and puddle. Up. Um, and but that's about it. You don't hear or see any any movings in the uh, in the woods around you. It's kind of gone back to to neutral. Everything's calm. Uh, but two hours go by and. If you want, you can keep going or uh, tag somebody in. Um, I think at this point, I probably would tag. Um, I'm just going to roll a d20 because Myrna <laughs> doesn't know really a lot about any of you at this point. Um, so, Avi, I'll go and nudge Avi. Since Avi seemed to like the fire and the fire is out. Um, there you go. Oh. Avi. Yeah. Avi. Yeah. Uh, I need yeah, to get yeah. some rest. Do you think you can stay awake to keep watch for a little while? Um, yeah, I def- definitely can. Okay. Now I'll go back to my tree and I'll close okay. my eyes. Right. I'll get up and uh, put some more, you know, kindling on the fire. Put some more logs. Not too much. I don't want it to be like a, you know, blazer, but enough to be, you know, have some yeah. warmth. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, and as you do that, you can see what little remnants of... Cass's bed of ice is now just kind of breaks off and is now totally gone. So he, as you've kind of warmed up the the area around him, uh, yeah. So but you got a puddle. <laughs> now it's just a, a lukewarm puddle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a hot bath. Um, but yeah, again, nothing nothing goes off. Nothing triggering your senses. Kind of, kind of. You. I will say this though. Uh, behind the way you came. That fog has now gone from what it was just in the treetops is now kind of cradled behind you, cutting off any path back. Okay. But yeah, that's that's it. I'll go wake Cass for the remainder. <laughs> hey, um, I heard I yeah. heard some stuff in the woods. Just keep an eye out. All right. Very well. Uh, I don't. I, it was small, so I don't think it was anything to be too worried about. You get some rest. I don't gonna, keep a lookout. Good job. And I'm gonna put another couple logs on the fire, and then I'll fall asleep. Okay. So, Cash, you wake up. You kind of take post. <laughs> two hours go by. Anything you want to do within that two hours? Uh <clears throat> pull the water back up so that I can put it back in my my little bed my bed flask. So oh, sweet. nice. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I've, got, so is, yeah, is, I've got the two. Is this intended to be like a reusable source? You and then put it back in, and then I would pro- I would have to probably okay. replace it after a couple okay. of times because right. the dirt would come in with it. But yeah, yeah. it's 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 a portable bed essentially. Yeah. Um, separate the elements. <laughs> yeah, just using shape water in an interesting okay. way. Basically. All right. um, yeah, so you take minutes, moments. Kind of capture all that and anything yeah. else? Uh, not really. Just kind of uh, keeping an eye out, taking a look around, and okay. trying not to get too lost in my own thoughts and trying yeah. to stay focused. And, and at this point, behind you, that that fog that it has kind of crept up and cradled behind you, it starts to illuminate. And, and what you can, I would assume, is is the the sun is now kind of cresting up behind you, and it is turning that. It there's not a big change in, in the the light temperature. It is very muted. It's very muffled, but it it does kind of like we said last time, like turning your brights on, 
in a fog bank. It just kind of illuminates that gray in front of you. There's not any clear sun rays that that break through, but it is starting to rise. Um, and that would that would make a six hour long rest, and you guys would all be fully long rested. Um, so, Cash, you're in charge of waking the group if you'd like. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I'll. I'll let them have a, a, a little bit of a longer sleep, just so they're <clears throat> going to be ready for the next day. It was a long night, so uh, I want to make sure they've got a decent amount of rest. And then, yeah, I'll go around and just kind of <laughs> unceremoniously just kind of poke with the other end of my trident, just like, up you get. <laughs> Come on. Cass is not a people person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, it's yeah, tempting to be polite about it, but... You go around and poke and prod everyone. How's it, what 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 is the reaction to being tri- tridented? In an <laughs> I take it and try to snap it in half, <laughs> or at least threaten like I'm going to start snap it in half. Casts handled themselves very well yesterday. I don't need to actually <laughs> rob them of any ability to defend themselves. So <laughs> it's like, all right, I'm sorry, Jesus. I'm just going to say his breakfast next time. Good morning to you two as well. <laughs> morning indeed. Uh, <laughs> Bull and, and Tack, you guys have gotten a full eight hours. <laughs> no, no watch in there for you. Uh, how, how are you feeling? My, I open one eye, just, just barely a sliver, um, and then frown and kind of dust myself off a little bit, a little brush into the the grass and twigs and loose pebbles out of my clothes and and get up. So you didn't like your first night camping? I never said it was my first night camping. (laughs) How would I know that I don't like camping if I hadn't done it before? (laughs) I think it was more the fact that uh, this isn't all a bad dream, unfortunately. I think he's just grumpy. (laughs) <laughs> and, uh, Bull has been up since uh, the end of Cass's watch since he only needs four hours he's just been like playing with the cards <laughs> <You> bastard <laughs> in the shadows <laughs> nice like, well can we guess- uh, can we go down this road or are we gonna hang out all and I guess I will point out too that Zircon did sleep which is probably for those of elven heritage extremely odd. Well, um, no sense waiting, uh, Ball. You would you like to lead the way? Ah, he like stretches out. Yeah, I guess I can do that. Um, I, I, I have to come clean. Um, a couple hundred feet. I don't know if we can. Can we see <laughs> that structure now? Uh. Yeah, so Bull, as you were getting up and kind of stretching, you see now this outline of a house. It's 150, <laughs> 200 feet uh, further down the track. <laughs> um, there, I did spot a house. I, I saw no lights on, so I, I thought it might have been rude to, you know, interrupt them while they were sleeping. Yes, and it was more prudent to make us sleep out in the, in the wilds. Okay, I'm going to get you back. I'm gonna get you back. That's fair. And you take out a small <laughs> little, little like notebook, <laughs> and just make a note, and then close the book and put it back in my pocket. <laughs> Not breaking eye oh, contact shit. the entire time. <laughs> you've made, you've made the book. <laughs> you just made the list. <laughs> Uh, uh, DM, did we did we happen to level up? <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a that's a no. Not yet. No go there, Jer. <laughs> I hate saying no. Why do you keep making me say it? I I I'm just I'm just double checking. Just double yeah. Check. Strad only ever says yes. How about this? I'll tell you when you level. <laughs> <laughs> Fair it's enough. like one of those. Well, if you hate saying no, yeah. then. <laughs> Well, if you keep asking me. <laughs> and to be fair, I did add a plus three shield before you said it was a joke. So, <laughs> true, true, true. so I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, we'll be the only group that goes through Curse of Strahd at level one. Yep. <laughs> no, 
If only because out of game you pissed off yeah, the DM. It's yeah, fine. Just, uh, <laughs> no, not not quite. I mean, I think I'm ready to push forward. You guys? Everybody else? I was ready last night. Yeah. I suppose. Well, now we're fresh. Yes, it's fresh. Yes. Uh, for certain members, pissed off, so 10 out of 10 on that one. Well. So as you guys are, like, kind of cleaning up and, and looking out now with a little more illumination, you all see the sun. You can see the, the orange globe in the sky, but, it, again, it's not giving any any rays of light. It's, it's just kind of... It's like dim light almost all the way, except just, you know, it just never ends. You can see dim light all the way. So... Uh, sorry. Uh, Dax, yeah, you gain... Spell slots back. Every, everything gets reset. I didn't want um, to interrupt the monologue. Nope, Sorry. you're right. I'll just ask next time. <laughs> um, so as you're kind of looking out, you do see this house out there, kind of this lone house, this lone, it, not mansion-like, but it is more than one story from what you can tell where you're at. Um, there is some low-lying brush that is around in this in the meadows to your left and right. Um, no, it is, it, there are no trees forest line to the north that kind of uh you came out and then it loops up and around and to the south is uh, a river you can't really you can hear it more now during the daytime uh, but i don't know why you would hear it more during the daytime than at night but <laughs> you can see it too let's say that <laughs> but th there is a river to the south that you can you can kind of get a visual uh, on um yeah so you, you guys heading pushing forward down for, further down the road as as uh, Tack and Cass are being all grumpy. I'm just gonna start walking. Okay. <laughs> so you lead in the way as you are getting closer to this this house. You see a, a little gravel road that that heads to the north, to the le uh, left, right. Excuse me, right off of the road, um, and it leads to this tall. Uh, dark house. It's very tombstone shaped. Very tall. Um, no lights on. You do... Avi, as you approach, you hear a soft whimpering kind of making its way to your ears as you're kind of like eyeing up and down this, this house right off the porch. The front porch of it you see a pair of children standing uh, in the middle of what would be otherwise this lifeless area. Kind of, They're kind of cowered. Um, one is a little bit taller than the other um, and has their arm around the shorter one. And I'll pick up speed at that point and head towards it. Okay. And is everybody f following suit? Yeah. I would keep my distance a little bit. Okay. I'm not a like... fan of children. <laughs> <laughs> they are the worst. I'm, I'm right there with her. Kids are creepy and this already feels like a bad idea. <laughs> I'd I'd probably I, I'd probably follow them just to make sure they don't get into trouble more than I Okay. Else. All right. Bull's gonna get close enough to Avi uh, to cast precedentation and make it look like he peed his pants. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Peeing your pants uh, is cool. <laughs> consider me Avi Toast. Um, all right, so <laughs> it, it looks like you wet your pants. You don't feel the wetness, but sweet. <laughs> so, so Avi, Avi, and Cass are kind of leading the group, bowl behind, and then behind them, uh, Tack and Myrna. And as Avi and Cass, you get closer. You see the taller one is uh, a little girl, and the the shorter one is a little boy and she goes um, she's turning to her brother and goes shh, shh, shh people are coming people are coming and then go ahead and well as we get close enough where they can hear me without shouting I'm going to kind of slower slow down slower down <laughs> and kind of put my hands up and go um hello is uh, everything okay uh yeah, yes, there's there's a monster in our house. Um, well, I, from the judge of it last night, there's monsters out here, too. What, what, uh, what kind of monster is it? 
I don't know, but it's it's in the basement. And she she points to the the front door there, and um, I have a handout if uh, I think I can show this to you, show to everyone. Uh, you should see in roll twenty what the house looks like. Ooh. Can you you don't see the that notes under it? We can see the title, which is a little disconcerting. Yeah, yeah, don't read the title. It's not called that. <laughs> it's not called that. I really, really wish they wouldn't call it that. Um, sure. It's fine. <laughs> Everything, oh, everything's fine. Just click on it and you maximize it. The name of it goes away. It just okay. Yeah, just. <laughs> um, and then I'll show this one to you as well. Uh, this is what the the children look like. Oh. Oh, they look so pleasant. No, Va Vampirina. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, a, um, I'm, I'm afraid of the doll. Can I just say that? The child, the, the little yeah. boy holding the doll. I just do not know. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, in, in the basement there, there's a there's a monster. Our parents told us never to go down there. Well, where where and, are your parents now? I don't, I don't know. Uh, uh, but my brother, Walter, is up in the third floor. Can you help? I do not Please. like this. You have to help one bit. Well, I mean, I'm going to turn to Cass and say, "We're we're here to help these people, right?" I thought you we were here to. to sort out their ruler, but you know, Bo will go up to the uh, little girl or the kids and say, uh, "Now, do you do you happen to know where Madam Eva stays?" As you, as you approach, she she kind of grabs, puts her arm over her brother even more, and like takes a few steps back. Uh, Madam Eva, I don't I don't know Madam Eva, but Walter, you can save uh, him, can't you? Bo looks to Avi and uh, Cass. Well, I don't think there's anything of consequence here. I think we should keep moving. You can't. At this point, I will walk up, and I'm going to be puffing out my chest a little bit. I'm going to lean in close enough. So, I noticed you did not answer. Where are your parents? I, I, I think they're in in their bedroom. And why can they not help Walter? They, they were they were sleeping. And <clears throat> they told us never to wake them while they're sleeping. Okay, well, let's go find them. And I'll Wait, please. Going to intrude in some of these house while they sleep. Oh, I, please! It's uh, the door. The door's open. Uh, I've got a plan. And Bull produces his horn oh, again. No. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna reach for the girl's hand and say, "Just lead me into your parents." As you reach, she again takes more steps it's back. It, it's okay. It's okay. No, no, We're no, here to help. No. Okay. Well, I am. I don't know about these people, clearly. <laughs> uh, Can please. I tell if this is some sort of a trick? Uh, you can give me a perception check. <laughs> Question <It's> mark? <laughs> well, is it, are you reading their facial expressions? or are you? I'm trying, trying to... to read facial and start... I mean, I used to deal with a lot of children that would lie to get out of trouble. So <laughs> Would you like to just poke them, see if they're real? <laughs> just... <laughs> hey! Uh... <laughs> We won't poke children. That's that's inappropriate. Um, so well. if you're reading more of the face, I'll say insight. But if uh, you want to just perceive kind of them, I'd say perception. All right. Um, that's going to be a nine. Nineteen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so as you're looking over their face, they do have uh, like that gaunt kind of feel to them, kind of in, indented cheeks. Their cheekbones are protruding a little bit. There's fear in her eyes. And and, and you can see her brother or the, the boy, little boy next to her, uh, tears, you know, welling up in the corner and kind of really clutching that doll tight. Um, so the, the fear is there and the, the trembling in her, you are picking up on that tremble in her voice. Well, if worse comes to worse, we can find adults to talk to to find where we're looking for. I do not feel comfortable going through somebody's house, a stranger, no less. Oh. 
perhaps Just to... finding the parents might not be a bad idea. I can't at least try to wake up my parents. Hey, well, leave us here. Just uh, tell me where to go. Follow, follow. I'll come with they'll, you. They'll kind of turn and, and walk in that direction, and she's looking over her shoulder at you. Their name are... Their, my dad's name is Gustav, and my mom's name is Elizabeth. Uh, so, and then they'll catch you up to the... You are now at this... Um, the uh, the portico that is on the front of this house. Um, I have too many tabs open, I tell yeah, you. I'm going to open the door. So there is a wrought iron gate in front that opens into kind of a, uh, a breezeway. And then inside of that, there is um, uh, wooden doors. Yeah, I'm just going to go in. As I get to the wooden doors, I'll knock first. Um, hello. Okay. Um, so I have switched maps on you. It's, day, it's daytime, right? Yes. Daytime esque. Morning. Um, that as that sun is kind of coming up, it is not bright sunlight. You can see around you. You do have normal field of uh, view, but it is not yeah. like sunlight. Bull's gonna blow on his horn and be like, uh, Gustav, Elizabeth, we got your, your kids downstairs. They, they're afraid to wake you, but I don't give a damn. Come How's on down. Let's, let's make them think we are kidnapping the children. Yeah. <laughs> can, we, can, we, can we cool it on the horn for a little bit, maybe? Can that, somebody take his horn, actually? <laughs> they are very heavy <laughs> sleepers. They're not... Well, Okay. Lead me to the front door, and I will go in. Okay. Uh, so, as you're in this little um, entryway... Um, Should I pull up the battle the, map for this? In stream? Yeah, I think that'd be good. Oh, look at that slick transition. Um, there, the wrought iron uh, gate that is the entryway, the hinges are um, rusted and kind of creak as you open them up and as you step inside uh, there are oil lamps on each side of this entryway none, neither of which are lit um, they hang from uh, excuse me, they hang from the ceiling in chains but there are two that are up there flanking a set of oak, oaken doors um, in front of you uh, is, there are oaken doors in front of you um, you do see on the south wall which is to your right as you're standing within this uh, entryway. Or no, sorry, you haven't gone that far yet. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, no, are you? Going, are go you? Ahead. Keep going. Yeah, that's fine. Just get, reveal it all. Yeah. <laughs> um, sorry. Uh, um, I'll, I'll get to the wooden doors and I'll knock. Yeah, you get to the wooden door and as you knock, it just kind of creaks open. Creaks and, uh, open. Is it dark in here? Uh, yeah, it is dark. All right, Produce Flame comes out. I'll be like, hello, okay. um, hello, Gustav? Uh, as you kind of peek your head in, 15 feet in front of you are another set of doors, uh, wooden doors. And where are the kids uh, at this point? They are standing outside. So They did not step onto the, uh, the porch. I'll turn around and say, where is your brother, sister, and where are your parents? Huh. <sighs> Brothers on the third floor. Parents, bedroom is on the second. Don't go in the basement. Okay, well, calm down. We'll figure it out. It's okay. Um, is Don't anybody go else in following me? The basement. I. Cass is very, very hesitant and really does not like this situation. But at the same time, in his head, Going alone is a far worse decision than going with people that know how to handle themselves. So I'm going to draw my trident, since I was standing uh, next to Arvi anyway. I'll draw my trident and just kind of keep a little bit back away from him and let him take point, but <laughs> enough that I'm still involved okay. and I can see okay. what he sees. Okay, right. uh, yeah, I'll move into the next room uh, slowly and... Just try and illuminate it first. Yeah, so your your flames do fill this small entryway. Um, and on the, that south wall, you do see a shield. 
uh, it's like a coat of arms. And are there any, like, wall sense, sconces that could light candles? Um, yeah, there are two on that uh, northern wall to your left. There are two that are on, in each corner. Okay, so I'll go and light candles so this whole room yep. is just... Yep, they they take to light and <clears throat> illuminate the room. And then, um, uh, look at the shield, what's... Yeah, so on the shield you see a, a, a golden windmill, windmill in the center of it, and then a red field uh, that is all behind it, and kind of like a uh, depth of perception kind of is going off into the distance and through the back of the shield, very 3D-like. Um, there are the doors flanked by the shield are framed portraits of stony-faced aristocrats. And you recognize two of the children uh, being the two that are out on the outside of the front porch. And then their parents, which you can surmise is Gustav and, uh, shoot, what was her name? Elizabeth. Elizabeth, <laughs> Elizabeth sorry. Do they Thank look you. less creepy in the portrait? <laughs> or do they look, uh, like, the same? No, it's a pretty good simulation of what they are. Creepy. What they look okay. like now. Creepy. Yeah. Creepy. <laughs> um, Adam's family light. Is there three yeah. kids? Not in, not in these pictures. Not in this uh, picture. There is, uh, and then the mahogany frame double doors leading into the house. And there are panes of stained glass embedded within this. And through the glass is, is pitch black. You don't see any uh, flickering of candlelight or oil lamp in the, in the other side. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll knock and slowly open the door. Yeah. You knock, are you, you giving it a beat or are you knocking and opening? Knock and open. Knock, knock, I'm here. Hello, <laughs> yeah, so, um, Gustav. As you open... Shh, let me see. I'm trying to figure out where all these... I'm, I'm, I'm legit, like, nervous over here. <laughs> Don't be nervous. All right, so is, is anybody else coming into the, the entryway? Like, Is anybody watching the kids, by the way, so they're not, like... Shape shifting and murdering us. <laughs> they draw down. That would be me. Okay. Right. Yeah, I've, I've got my eye on the kids too. Okay. All like four of you, not... all four of you, watch the kids. I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds well, good. I'm, I'm still. So I'm, I'm still, uh, this I'm still sticking fine. with. Uh, I'm still sticking with Avi. So I'm, I'm okay. direct. Right. Uh, pretty much direct. Behind You're a little bit away, but behind right. you. Your tokens are on the map, so you can you can feel free. I, I yeah. will say this, um, as we go into like battle maps, I will. Where you put your token is where I will assume you are. <clears throat> Just, you know, so... Do we lose a you, you have control over that. Uh, Avi, you are making your way in, peeking in. We got Cass right behind you. Um, Myrna and Tack are kind of keeping the watchful eye on the two children that are standing just off off of the porch. Uh, Bull, I, I don't know what you're doing. You're trying to blow your horn. Uh, Bull is also on the porch, and he's eating his uh, rations for the day. And okay. he's like... He's he's flavoring it up with some prestidigitation, and he'll like offer it to the kids if they're. He said they're looking a little gaunt. He's like, hey, hey, hey kids, want some candy? If you're hungry, you know I got I got plenty. Uh, yeah. No, no, they just kind of shy away, and and she every time every uh, advance made towards them, she grips her brother tighter, and and in turn her brother grips his doll tighter. Okay. What? Why don't you two head on in the house, following behind our friends there? Uh, we can't. You, you, there's the monster. It's in the basement. But we just, I just need you to grab my brother Walter. Walter? Uh, I didn't hear that, so I'm just. Yeah, yeah, Walt, Walter. I thought you <laughs> fact and checking me. What would you two be called? Uh, my. She kind of. Hyper, little hyperventilate. She's, you can tell she's a little put off by your appearance, Myrna. Myrna and I am. My name is Ro Rose, and Rosavalda, and this is my brother, uh, Thor Thornbolt, uh, Durst, Ro Ro Rosavalda, and, and Thornbolt Durst. Durst is your surname. Uh, yeah, yeah. 
those are the two kids. How did they get to Walter for the third one? <laughs> <laughs> we ran out of Elizabeth ideas. Elizabeth's side of the family, because it's Gustav and then it's Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, that's what I mean. It's like uh, looking at like uh, multiple different dragons. It's like, well, this one's Jeff, because I can't be asked to name He was named last. Um, uh, yeah, uh, Walter's on the in the nursery on the third floor. It's right off the, the stairs. You've said that landing. a couple times now. Hey, we're just... We're, we're worried about him, and we need help. Why didn't you get him on your way out? The, 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 the monster who was making noise. Yeah, but it was making a lot of noise. And What floor is your bedroom on? We're on the th third floor. And the next so to, the monster next that to... was in the basement making noise, and you couldn't get your little brother on your way down... Closer to the basement to come outside. God we, damn, kids! I have a trouble following this. Uh, we 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 weren't in the in the in, in the third floor when the monster was making all the noise. We were in the kitchen. It's just just inside. Tell us everything you know, kid. <laughs> she uh, she doesn't say anything at that. She just kind of folds in upon herself. Where is she wants. A... Go ahead. Is there like a landing on the third floor? Yeah, third floor up, you can see like the, the railings of what would be a porch. And then there is, uh, yeah, so a porch on the third floor. And the fourth floor is, there's nothing. It just, there's no ceiling to this porch on the third floor. It just goes straight up. There are some oh. eaves that kind of catch from the fourth floor. Bull's gonna misty step up to the third floor <laughs> and look in the window. Okay, um, what's your misty step distance? Uh, 30 feet. Oh, well, like 10, 10 feet of floor, yeah? 10 feet of floor, um, <laughs> or I'll jump, I'll jump up and then misty step. <laughs> misty step in the. <laughs> I'll give it, the, I'll give that to you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so you can they would go straight to the third uh, yeah floor. <laughs> god damn you. um we <laughs> found the exit um <laughs> so you can see that the first floor that second floor is taller than the first floor so it's it's about 10 feet on the first floor and then 12 feet for the second floor so it is maximizing your misty step distance but you do make it up there yeah um, and you you can see it. It's up north on the map. Uh, I'll, I think I can ping it for you. Yep, up there. Yeah. Uh, so you are now up there. There is a window to the what would be the east side. I hate it when they don't make up north on these maps. Right. Up is east in this on this map. So in the eastern side, you do see in into. Um, a room. I can give you a little description. Uh, give me a perception check as you're kind of peeking through. Uh, the window up here is very like dust clouded, so it is uh, rather difficult to see. Yeah, that's a uh, ten. So you can see in a little bit. You can make out uh, uh, there's a door in there to the to the right. This seems to be. You can see. Hmm. On the left side of the room, you see a crib. Okay. Uh, Bull is going to cough loudly and break the window with his arm, with his elbow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can you say you're aft? Um, so, Bull, I'm going to drag your token up there one one piece at a time. All right. Uh, yeah, so you, you kind of give me a, give me a strength check just yeah. see if uh make sure you don't not, not bull's forte i am not healing that <laughs> <laughs> just saying it now saying it now uh that's a 14 not bad 14 yeah you're able to get one of the paints it, it's it's got uh a cross a wood cross in the middle of it so you get one of the the quadrants of panes of glass so you'd have to break the rest out to get yourself through but you can see in there better now um and you do see that this is the nursery 
and there is uh, a door to the right. Uh, I'm going to pause you there, Bull. Uh, we'll go back to Avi and and Cass as you were down on the first floor. Why do you guys got to split the party? Now I got to like two narratives in my head. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's all right. I'm not complaining. So um, do we hear so, that? That's what I was about to ask. Yeah, do we hear um, the smash? You guys are inside. Give me a perception check. It's 12. Uh, not with the 12. Uh, 15. Uh, what's your passive? 14? Uh, my 14, passive. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Cass, with that 15, 15 was the DC. You do hear the shattering of a little bit of glass tinkling onto the ground. Um, and, and I'll give you a little description of this room that you are in. Uh, is Myrna and Tack, are you, stay, you guys staying outside? Yeah, I'm going to try and convince okay. the kids to just go into the the foyer, the first room. The foyer. Uh, yeah. I did not pronounce it with my southern accent. The foyer. Um, but yeah, trying to get them into the, go into the foyer. The first room after the porch. So okay. that at least we can go into the house. And I'll, okay. help, I'll help them with that. Okay. Um, let, let me, I'll take care of uh, Avi and, and Cass and then I'll, I'll come back to you. Uh, so what you guys see in here is a wide hall that runs what you can make would be the width of the house. A black marble fireplace and it is dark in here so I think I saw my cast okay so you still have your flame illuminating there um, so there's a, a black marble fireplace to your right and a sweeping red marble staircase that goes up on on the other side of the room mounted on the wall above the fireplace is a long sword with a windmill cameo worked into the hilt so that same windmill that you saw on the shield uh, that family crest that was out in the, the foyer, foyer um, is on the hilt of this sword. Uh, it is wood paneled, ornately sculpted images of vines and flowers, nymphs and satyrs um, uh, are all over. Uh, there is a door to the, the top, two doors to the top and a little hallway um, that you haven't quite got all of. Of, uh, sight of. I guess you could see. I'll reveal it. I guess you could see um, this door right that would head that way. And then um, Mirna and uh, Tack, as you're kind of urging them to move forward, they do inch closer to, and they just get onto the uh, the steps of the the front porch, but are hesitant to go in further past that that wrought iron gate that is. Can we just, just the first room, can we please just go into the house? We don't want to leave you outside unattended. Her her chest starts really heaving, and they, they take steps, and they go just inside of the wrought iron gate, one, one square forward. This, this is far, this is far enough. Please. Why don't we go a little bit, Bella? You do not think that we could handle ourselves and protect you? I mean, no, I... And I'm going to prepare my fangs. Uh, uh, it is... It's just... My my, my brother Thorn... He won't, 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 won't go. And you, you see him. He, those tears that were once welled in the eyes are now like streaming down the side of his face. And, and his ashen gray skin is like... You can see the path of tears that are just falling down. Not saying anything, but just... He's already scared. Why would you make him be more scared? I'm gonna turn to Zircon. Did you ever... Were you ever afraid to go and seek help from your parents? No. But I am gonna... Now that I'm kind of on the porch, I'm gonna put my hands out. And kind of to put interpose myself between them and the wrought iron gate. And try and do that parental like... We're going this way, whether you want to or not. Yeah. So you can either try and run past me, or you can go in the direction that I would like you to go. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Only right, in uh, the first room. Uh, say it one more time, sorry. Only in the first room. Just first just that one. First room, and that's it. And that's it. Okay, they, they go through those the first do set of double wooded doors and they immediately go right into the corner to the left and they kind of 
huddle themselves into that corner. That's that's fine with me. Yeah, I, we'll I say, go ahead we'll and come on right into there. the house. Yeah. Okay. You can't. Don't don't make us go any further, please. It's fine. This is this is far enough. You gonna buy a token up, Myrna? Cass and Avi, what you heard, uh, or Cass, you heard the the crashing of glass. Avi, you are kind of looking around. I w- I would assume. Avi. Yeah, it's definitely something upstairs. Just had some kind of knock or crash or something. Well, let's go. Um, and I'm just going to take off up the stairs. Okay. That's one way of doing it. All right, I'll follow. <laughs> I'm sorry. <sighs> All right, let me reveal. Just like, that, 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 like, that parent that's just like, oh, God, right, okay. This is it. <laughs> uh, Mirna and Tack, I don't, I don't know you would see Avi, but once Avi gets up into that second level, you would see the light that would be in the first level go away. Um, so it gets a whole lot darker in there. And Avi and Cass, as you guys come up to the, the second level, um, still unlit oil lamps... It's, it's dark. There are oil lamps mounted on the walls. Uh, it's an elegant looking hall hanging above the mantelpiece to the uh, north or to the left side of the map is a wood framed portrait of the Durst family. Um, you see Gustav, Elizabeth, Fred, two smiling, two smiling children uh, cradled in the arms in the father's arms is a swaddled baby, which um, <sighs> You can you can openly blatantly see a hint of scorn on the mother's face. Uh, she is not smiling in this um, this portrait. Standing suits of armor flank the wooden doors in the east and west walls. Each suit clutches a spear and has a visored helm shaped like a wolf's head. Uh, the doors are carved with dancing youths. Youths. My cousin Vinny, sorry. Uh, all, um, yeah, so and the doors are carved with uh, dancing youths, and the marble staircase goes up. Continuing. I'm going to quickly look and then just cruise up. Okay. Just kind of gets the top, realize that Arby's gone up again, and just kind of... <sighs> just all right. follow. And I, I can move you, Cass, if you, if you want. Oops. And you said how far of a drop is it from third floor? So 10 feet, uh, 10, 12, so that the porch of the third floor is about 25 feet up. And this stairwell has an open middle all the way down? Yeah, yep. Okay. Yep. Uh, so we'll planning cu- exit routes, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got you. Uh, we'll cut to Bull. Bull, what are you doing in this nursery? I'll... Kind of reveal some more areas for you. Uh, can I hear them running up the stairs? Uh, give me a perception check. Um, I, I'll say you can hear them once they hit the landing of the top floor or the third floor. Yeah, there's no reason. Right. Yeah, I it's think like it's... a seventeen anyway. Okay. Um, uh, I'm still on the the landing, or if I entered the room. No, you're you're. Oh, sorry. Yeah, you weren't uh, fully in. Now, is this a thing where I can like unlock the window and open it, or is it this? Not no, like it's a, a single. It's a single. Okay. There's no open close, as it yeah, is yeah, the yeah. nursery. We don't want a, a Lindbergh. Yeah. And it has four different separate panes. Sorry. Okay. Uh, if I hear somebody running up the stairs, it sounds like they're closing in. I'm gonna try to throw my dagger into the door, and so it wed- wedges into the frame, <laughs> so somebody can't come in. <laughs> Oh man, we need rules for a called shot. Um, <laughs> give me. Then, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Oh man, I don't know if that's even possible in a D and D setting. But you can give give me an attack roll, or no, it'll be a dex check. It'll be a dex check, which is probably an attack roll for you. But uh, yeah, it's tough. And outside of a nat twenty, it's. It's gonna be tough, tough to, tough to lodge and and. Ah! <laughs> Fuck you! That's so bad. I'm sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That is actually a net twenty. <laughs> I see that skull splitter logo. Uh, oh so, my goodness! 
Why did I say anything? I should... <laughs> Serious that faces. That was mistake number one, DM. <laughs> hey, I yeah, set you, the DC, you, you break you it. You conjured uh, that nat 20. <laughs> so I'm going to say you're able to throw it down into the wooden floor, creating like a door stop. And it is, it is there at the base of the door. Um, I mean, it is just a dagger with the tip in, in the wood. So well, we'll see. Then I'm going to try to break the rest of the window and be like, Walter, I got you. Okay. Little Walter Mellon, I got you, bro. I <laughs> got you. I'll leave right, and the door opens the other way, though. Breaking the rest <laughs> of the glass? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, All right, yeah, you... Once you got it started, I don't need another strength check. You're able to just kind of shimmy, uh, Jimmy, the rest of it out. You do get inside. Uh, Avi and Cash, you hear more glass hitting the ground. Um, so, Bull will put you in there. You do... It is dusty. And I, I should say this too, uh, Cass and Avi. Once you hit that third level, dust fills your nostrils. Cobwebs kind of skew your vision. Um, it is not clean at all, uh, like the first two levels were as you moved up. Um, but, Bull, as you are in this bedroom, in this, uh, what you can make out to be the nursery, there's the crib there. Um, it is covered with a hanging black shroud, like almost like a canopy bed, like. But it is black and not, and you cannot see through it. All right, he'll slowly walk toward it. Hush, little baby, don't <laughs> say a word. I'm scared. <laughs> All right, so you you walk toward it. Um, there's no creaking or sounds coming from it. Uh, uh, but that shroud I is kind of tented over the crib itself. He's, he's going to stop halfway, think better of it, cast Unseen Servant, and send... <laughs> Kane, Kane uh, can you go retrieve little Walter uh, for me? And uh, Good, and we'll pause will, there. <laughs> Avi and Cass, you hear more glass hit the hit the uh, hit the deck. You had that one, right? Um, yeah. Not so really why wrong, going crazy? We don't stop here, do we? <clears throat> I don't think that would be the smartest idea. And I'm just gonna push oh, through. I the didn't. Room. I didn't give. I didn't give you a a description of description. The, Sorry, other man, than brain. dust and cobwebs, yeah. All right, let me give you a description of this uh, landing. Um, so you get to the top of this red marble staircase uh, to the full height. It is a dusty balcony. There's a suit of black plate armor standing against one wall. Uh, and that would be the one to the left, far left. Draped in cobwebs. Uh, there are oil lamps mounted uh, on the oak paneled walls. Uh, these walls are carved with uh, woodland scenes of trees, falling leaves, tiny critters. Um... There are doorways to the south. There are doorways all over this place. Um, but yeah, you hear that noise coming from the bottom of the map. Yeah, I'm going to be right where you're at. I'm going to open the door right there. Okay. Quick. I'm, uh, it's not a slow open at this point. I'm going to barge into it. Okay. As you do that, Cash, you see that suit of armor start to crack. And the cobwebs start to break, the dust flies, and the slam is coming down on Avi. As you walk right past it, it goes into motion. Um, that's a four. That's not going to hit. That doesn't, I think it doesn't the, hit. I think the 22 will hit. Uh, n yes, it does. You take five points of bludgeoning damage as this fist of plate mail comes <laughs> crashing down. And I think we need to roll initiative. We'll have everybody roll just so we're kind of in. This is why we don't split the party. <laughs> this is why we don't split the party. I, I mean, right. to be fair, y'all stayed back. <laughs> so we got Cass, we got Bull, we got Tack, we got Mirna. We are missing. Who are we missing? Avi, I'm in there now. Avi, there you are. Okay. Let's see. Descending. All right, Avi, it is your turn. You just take this... Kind of pushing you into the door. And does that open reveal what's in this doorway? Yeah, I'll reveal that now. Boom. Uh, did that reveal it? Nope, negative. Son of a gunny sack. Yeah, so that you see this bedroom. Um, let me, I'll give you a little brief. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, the bedroom it has a large bed, two end tables. Um, yeah, that's all you can see from there. All right. You do see door doors that <clears throat> are to to your right as you would be facing into that room. Well, um, I, I'm gonna move. Just continue my momentum in here. Okay. Leaving the door open. And I'm going to throw my flame at it. Okay. Oh. Great. That's an eight. It's an eight. That misses. It hit an 18 and then it does this like really slow it, roll dude. onto the four. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's a miss. So you kind of hit the door jam as you're kind of stumbling and recovering from that slam attack on your back. <laughs> light up the door frame right next to it. Uh, Cash, you definitely see that. I'll say some of that reverberating fire light comes down, lighting up that stairwell in front of uh, anybody on the first floor. And I'm going to taunt it as much as you can taunt armor. <laughs> and just like, come get me. <laughs> All right. Okay. Shaking my shoulders uh, ever yeah, so wildly. Shimmy. Cass, that leads us to you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and approach this whole situation and just kind of be like, oh, for God's nope. sake. <clears throat> nope, uh, I'm, I'm going to run gonna... down the stairs. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, I, I am going to run towards it, and I'm going to attempt to grapple it. Okay. So contested strength? Uh, contested strength check, yeah. All right. I, I don't... I don't think I succeed. Um, <laughs> I, rolled, I, I rolled a seven, 17. Oh my god. Uh, yeah, no, 8. So, All right. Yeah, you kind of come running up, charging, and you jump up, but you almost, it's like getting hit by a bus. You just kind of you yes. stumble back. <gasps> uh, it is very stout and just kind of planted itself there as it's kind of uh, bracing for its next attack. Excellent. So you, uh... <laughs> So we'll say you you moved up to it. Uh, uh yeah, got it right up at right up at its face. Okay. And uh, then that's, I'll that's go ahead. Five feet of movement, uh, action. Yeah. Uh, I'll go ahead and use my bonus action to grab my trident, stab myself, and activate my crimson right. Okay. All right. And then that's all I can do. Okay. Uh, that leads us to tack. Um, you give me a perception check. We'll see kind of how much of this clinging and clanging uh, you are catching. Uh, ten. I'm going to say with the ten, you hear the clinging, but you don't kind of, you're kind of lost where it's coming from. You saw for a brief moment a, a so fire dead. kind of go in and out. Um, it's completely dark in here, though. Yeah, yeah. if you do not have dark vision... I live, Which I don't. I well, in this the... entryway where you are, the candles have been lit. So not where you're at, but into those double doors heading up. You Do the saw candles brief... come off the wall? Uh, these ones, yeah, you can. So there, It's not know. like a sconce that you take with you. You would have to hold the candle. A candle? That's fine. Okay. Um, I'll grab a candle and move okay. into the next room, frowning heavily. Um... <laughs> 10, 15, 20, 25. I'll move into the center of the next room and like hold the candle up to see if there's anything okay. going on in here. Yeah. And you, um, you see this kind of immaculate uh, entryway uh, fireplace over there, stairway going up, a couple doors uh, heading into a, a, other directions. Um, was I able to tell where the sound came from? Um, You would be able to surmise that it is coming Upstairs up north all the other doors are closed and putting two and two together now with that that firelight that came down and, and quickly extinguished uh yeah you you know it's going up uh i'll and i'll holler back myrna i think they're running into problems upstairs uh i'm not positive but that sounded like metal on metal from <laughs> the upstairs <laughs> and a guitar solo breaks out. Uh, you can dash if you'd like. I, I'll, nope. I'll say you're. I'm good. <laughs> right here. I'm not running with a candle. It'll go out. Then I won't be that able to see. Rule number one. Your parents always said. Okay. 
All right, so that leads us to the animated armor, which is facing you, uh, Avi. It's going to turn around as the, the more immediate threat now is right behind it. It is going to uh, take both of its fists and slam down onto uh, Cass. Um, and I don't think that's going to do much. That's going to be a uh, 13 and a 6. Oh, yeah. This is both. Uh, uh, yeah, so just both strikes just kind of slam onto the ground next to you. <laughs> uh, and it stands there un unmoved. Uh, Mirna, that brings us to you. All right. Um, hearing that, I'm going to turn to the children and say, you stay here. We are going to take care of this. And then I will, as soon as I can move my mouse over to my other screen, because I'm so technically capable, uh, move my full movement to the bottom of the stairs. So at least I'm in right next to okay. um, Zircon. And then um, I will take my dash to try and get up Okay. as far as um, I can to the stairs. Now, is that another 30 or? Yeah, another 30. Oh. It doubles your movement. 10, 15, 20. That gets you to about right here, I, I think, by my calculation. I'm pinging it for you. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30? I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get you up to that landing on the second floor. Okay. So I'll move there. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Perfect. Uh, and in, in here you do see there is a, a mantle on the one wall for suits of armor with wolf heads um, as they are they're holding a spear standing there. Okay. Uh, so that was movement and action to dash. You have a bonus action. Um, I do, but I'm going to hold it for now. So okay. I'm I'm all set this turn. Okay. All right, bull. That leads us to you. You hear this clinging. You, I imagine, underneath the door, you see that fire kind of light up. Uh, your unseen servant is out. What you want to do? Do I do I hear the clanging? Is the question. Yeah, I would imagine that <laughs> armor is like. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's not uh, stealthy. Well, I'm I'm still gonna send Kane to uh, uh, Kane check on that that baby, and uh, Bull will go over and retrieve his dagger from the um, the floor. I suppose. Okay, okay. Um, yeah. So Kane parts the uh, the shroud that is around it. Um, do you see what Kane sees? I uh, I, I don't think that's a thing, but I could. So I, I can I'm, use... gonna, I'm gonna say it picks up what is in there. It's a little yeah. kind of burrito wrapped baby. Ooh. And he turns around to you. Okay. What do I'll say that's what do I... I'll, I'll say that's uh that's Kane's turn. Uh okay. and you, you do see a bundle. Um it not moving. But it is there. Alright. Well, uh I guess I will I will not grab the dagger. I will go towards the little burrito instead and Okay. Yeah, I'll say it's a free your free action to interact with this object. And you do, uh -huh. uh, you're able to get it kind of opened up enough. Um, it is a tightly wrapped baby sized bundle. Um, and once you get in unwrapped a little bit, you see nothing in there. But I'll, I'll call out I'll, out the window because uh, I don't know that that's them in the hallway. I'm like, hey, Walter is uh, not, not here. He's a fake baby. Fake baby, people. Uh, uh, Bull, is that you? <laughs> Avi? You yeah. hear that coming. Need, how need some help. did you get up here? Need some help. Okay, you hear okay. quickly, very quietly, Bull, you hear, he, he must be in the basement. Of course. The, the baby made it to the fucking basement. <laughs> Much like Baby Yoda. Can do I, I'll say you still have your action and movement, Bull. Right, I'll, I'll, I'll move and, and retrieve my dagger so it's not blocking the door. And um, I guess if I can open the door, I'll do it. If not, then I'll wait till next turn. Okay. Can you say it one more time? Sorry. I was oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> reading and listening. Uh, my strong I'll, suit. I'll, I'll go and grab my dagger. Okay. And if, if I can open the door, I'll do it. If not, I'll wait till next turn. I'll... I'll I'll say your your free action was interacting with the baby. We can call your bonus action picking up the dagger and opening the door. How's that? Okay. That works. And then so you have an action and a little bit of movement left. Oh, I've got an action still. Uh, yeah, all right. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I will throw a... If I can see this... Are they right in front of the door? 
As you open and peek the, out the door, you see to your right, you see Avi kind of like doing a weird taunting dance, and you see <laughs> to your left, you see that armor that is just like striking down at uh, a figure you can't really make out, but it is it is cast. Okay, I will I will throw a a, a card at this guy. Okay, like okay. oh, uh, I fall down the hallway. Yeah. <laughs> That is a, a 12 to hit. I don't think that's going to do it. Uh, that's going to... Yeah, nah. Nah, dog. <laughs> that's not for me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> that is you. That brings us to back to Avi. Oh, no, not back to. We haven't got to you yet. So here's a question. Yeah. Would Q, I somehow be able to run and hit this thing towards the stairwell? I'm going to say the way he's facing uh, as the tokens are on the map, he's, he is, it would be tough. You'd have to come in and like push, but to do like a running leap. Yeah, okay. It, it would be, you would only push him further into Cass. All right, well, I'll... I'll come up into melee um, which is my strong okay. suit and now you are flanked so yeah I'm gonna just advantage. gonna attack with my sickle uh, a 19 uh, that hits for four for four points of damage yeah okay all right is that it um yeah, I don't got much else. Okay. Uh, that's Cass. It leads us to you. Uh, I just checked the rules, and it's a... Uh, <clears throat> for grapples, it's an athletics check. It's an okay. athletics contest, so I okay. didn't add my modifier from last time. Okay. But, um, yeah, I'm going to attempt to grapple him again. All right. I have a specific plan. <laughs> All right. Athletics check. 14. I got, a, 14. I got an eight. I got an 18. Oh, my God. Uh, so again, this animated armor is just in your face. You're trying to find a way to get a bear hug on this thing, and it's it's just bulky. It's a little outside of your uh, your reach. Okay. I was going to try and push him down the stairwell, but at this point, he's got way too much strength for me, apparently. Um, I'm going to kind yeah, of just, kinda, as, a, kinda as a free thing, just go, oh, yes, of course, the protective suit of armor is it in the goddamn basement. <laughs> There's nothing else I can really do, so I right. my turn. Uh, Tack, holding your, your candle in the first floor. Now your turn. I sigh heavily <laughs> and begin moving up the stairs. We have oh. 5, 10, 15, 20, You can get to about where Myrna is. Yeah. And is there any other light source here besides the candle that I'm holding? Nope, that's... That's it. That's as far as I'm going. I'm not. I'm not running with a candle to put it out. <laughs> All right, that moves us to the animated armor. It is going to double slam down on Cass again, who keeps yes. trying to get to him. Sorry, Cass. Oh, that's a nat twenty. Oh and... yes. Ah yes. Ah, <laughs> and, a, and, a, and a ten. A twenty and a ten. Ten misses. Uh, uh, the crit also no. <laughs> it actually was just too high. <laughs> Ooh, uh, that's gonna be that's twelve points of bludgeoning damage, as 12? both of these twelve total. Unconscious. <laughs> oh shit! <clears throat> I, yeah, uh, I, rolled, I rolled two fours on my D6. Uh, my blood right drops my max HP by one, so I have twelve max HP. So that's knocked me straight out with one hit. Ow! <laughs> yeah, so this these hands come down and just cr crumple you. Uh, and that, at that, he's going to turn around and face uh, Avi. Uh, that leads us to Mirna. You hear more of the clanking of armor as it is, uh, and you you are only a floor away, so you can you can get to the landing of the third floor. Yeah. With so just I'm your gonna, movement. Yeah, I'm going to move. I'm just going to shift myself up here, all awkwardly. Like, um, I can get there if I calculated right. Oops, sorry. So, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I was. I, I, I couldn't tell like, if you were. Oh my god, my token's possessed. I, I couldn't tell if you were lost in the, in the shroud. But, it's fine. Sorry. So, um, 
I get to the top of the stairs and I see them fighting this suit of armor and I'm going to point at the suit of armor and I'm going to cast Bane. Okay. Um, so it needs to make a charisma saving throw. Ooh, that is not a strong suit. I'm rolling the dice that I rolled the 20 with, so. Strong suit. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, oh shit. I was like, he has a minus one, but he actually has a minus five. So that's an 11. That does not, he fails. Okay. So going forward, anytime you need to make a saving throw, an attack roll, you have to subtract a D4 Ooh. from the uh, attack or saving throw roll. All right. I will add, let's uh, we'll add this little face on there. Not on you. I mean. On this you know, guy. There we go. Run. Okay. Um, Sorry. No, it's <laughs> Again, trying to... F I've uh, never DM'd on here uh, before. So, there we go. He is now Bane, so a minus four on attack rolls or saves or anything nice. of the like. Yeah, attack rolls and saves. So you got to roll Kay. a d4, and that's what you subtract from whatever you rolled. Nice. Um, and and as, as you're casting that, you do see him finishing his attacks on Cass, Cass falling to the ground and him turning around. Uh, between Avi and Cass, which one of the two of you looks the most squishy? Uh... I mean, well, I'm he's wearing dead. scale mail. Well, I, I, I'm wearing scale mail, so uh, it would definitely be Arvi, but yeah, I'm unconscious. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm going to also use my bonus action to cast Shield of Faith on Avi, so you have plus two to your AC. Ooh. Nice. <sighs> saving Nerfed. the day. Cleric saving the yeah, day. Yeah, no kidding. Well, right. I'm out of spell slots, so... <laughs> First level. All right. Um, <laughs> is that it, Mirna? All right. Bull, that leads us to you. As you are peeking out, you see uh, cast drop. Mirna joins the, the party. What do you want to do? Uh, gang, we're, we're in some sort of devil house, and he's going he's gonna to tell, uh, tell Kane to jump out the window with the, with the baby roll, <laughs> and he's going to cast Prestidigitation and light the... Uh, the the uh, crib on fire. Okay. Is and this then actual fire or is it? No, it's actual fire, but man. Okay. All right. <laughs> he'll, ste he'll step out into the hallway and, and use the bonus action to cast a healing word on Cass. Okay. And I'll say, "Hey, water boy, get the fuck up!" And he'll. Uh, what is that? A, a D four? It has D four plus your spell modifier. Hey, that's a, that's a, that's a whole six HP, my friend. <laughs> Cash, you are uh, <laughs> up with six. <laughs> Still prone. And both say we gotta go. You are prone, um, and you, yeah, Bull, your uh, unseen servant takes a leap off the uh, the edge there, and <laughs> vanishes. <laughs> that gets us to Avi. I thought you were frozen. Can I? No, deep in thought. <laughs> can I cast Produce Flame and throw it in the same turn? It does not specifically say that. Produce Flame. Is that a... That's not... Is that an attack? Does it have... It, it is an attack if I throw it. As, as far as I know, you could essentially pop it and throw it. I've okay. seen... Yeah, we'll, we'll treat it like an Eldritch Blast... Do it all in one. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so would I get an advantage on that since Cass is now Yeah, Cass up? is up now and, yeah, uh, yeah, getting the flank going on. 16. Is that 16 to hit? Yeah. That does not hit. <sighs> My dogs are wrestling. Did, just a reminder, we are level one, right? We didn't level up in between here. <laughs> No, but you did rush past uh, floors one, floors two. Went right to floor three. <laughs> to be fair, oh, no. it's not like going <laughs> deeper into the dungeon. It's like just flip that. You're going. Uh... <laughs> so, <laughs> so we've hit the hardest. Oh God, no! <laughs> you just went right to the end battle, right? <laughs> and I should be. I should be clear. I just realized that I cast two different concentration spells, oh. so Bane is no longer in effect. 
Oh. What was it? What was the second one you cast? Shield of um, Faith. Shield of Faith. Both are concentration spells. So Avi <laughs> has a, like a shimmering plus two to AC for the next ten minutes. But that Bane thing. I'll, gone. I'll I'll let you choose which one you want to keep up. I learning characters. I, I'll let you uh, choose. Wait, you cast yeah, Bane first? Yeah, I was going to say, I think I'd rather... I cast Bane okay. first. I think yeah, I'd yeah. rather keep that one up okay. first anyway. Right. Okay, so let's keep Bane up. Okay. Uh, yeah, no worries there. We'll... So you still have a spell slot then? Yay. <laughs> Might need it. Do you, do you want to use that... Was that a bonus action to cast Shield of Faith? Yes. So we can retcon a different bonus action if you want? No, because my other okay. stuff is bonus okay. action spell slot, so it's fine. All right, perfect. All right, All right. so that leads us to cast. You're back up. You are now at the back of this uh, this shield or this suit of armor. I'm just gonna very quickly kind of yell out. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> what are we doing? And just kind of, as I'm saying that, grab my trident and just jab the freaking thing. Okay. All right. You attack oh. with advantage because you are flanked with uh, Avi. Avi Toast, as we know him. Uh, plus four, that is a 19. 19 hits. Woo! Woo -woo. Uh, quick question, because it does actually matter for this class. Uh, when I went down, would I have dropped my weapon? Uh, it's it's a free action. Weapon, to... I lose my right. Mm -hmm. so I have we'll to say, we'll it. say it kind of rested in, in your palm. Yeah. Cool. Good to know. Uh, Good to know. Yeah, so if it's ever like, oh, my weapon launches across, I'd have to recast okay. it. Uh, six points of piercing damage, three points of cold damage. Ooh. So six and three, that would be a nine in my books. All right. Scholars. Yeah, so it's cold. kind of, as it stabs in, it kind of, this ice just starts radiating up, radiating up the back of its, uh, not a breastplate, but whatever the back of a breastplate is <sighs> kind of crackling up and uh, creating like little fissures within the armor itself uh, that leads us to tack still on the second floor bringing up the rear I will uh, move move up right. so I, I will say point uh, of order to yeah. my produce flame that does not include my wisdom modifier or my proficiency okay should it it should, because it's a spell spell cast. So that would be an additional plus four. Okay. It actually looks like it does proficiency, so plus two, so it'd be eighteen. But for future, I didn't catch it in time. Oh, to hit. Yes. Okay. Can I see the armor from this spot? Yeah, you can. You, there's enough room for you to shimmy by uh, Mirna and get I'm in not, melee if you'd no. like. <laughs> no, 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 no. But yeah, you can. You have. You have sight. Oh, no. Okay. Uh, I will again uh, let the inky blackness free from my fingers as an eldritch blast towards the suit of armor. Do it. Um, and that is going to be an 18. That hits. And that is nine points of damage, force Ooh, damage. Man. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's looking rough. It's starting to, like, bits and pieces of its armor are falling off and clanging onto the floor. Um, and then as my bonus action, I will summon a tentacle that's in the melee range square I could have moved into but opted okay. not to um, and attempt to strike it again. Okay. Okay. And that is probably going to miss with an eight. So. Yeah, that's going to miss. So this tentacle comes cruising up and tries to wrap itself around this armor, uh, and it's able to kind of brush it off. Um, that it, Tack? That's it for me. All right. This animated armor still looking at Avi. Going to crash down. It's going to hurt. Minus a D4. Four. Yeah. Is it All a minus right. D4 or minus four? D4. Minus a D4. Avi, uh, that was a, a 12 and an 11 to hit. Those do not. All right, so yeah, both swings miss. It is... Uh, so I'm close. I don't have to worry about too much. I'm going to 
take a swipe at okay. said uh, suit of armor. Okay. So that plus uh, two is 17. 17 does not hit. You at, you do hit it, but it's able to just kind of like deflect it with the bit of bracer that it has left. That's fine. I'm going to use my bonus action to go again with my War Priest ability. Okay. <laughs> love it. Nat love 20, it. baby. Yes. 22. All hey. right. That definitely hits. I want to hear uh, those words. So double the... Uh, you can roll two dice or you can double the dice you roll. I guess that's something we need to come up with as a party. Um, I'll roll it twice. Okay. Yeah. So roll right, double so the... four the... plus six. So that's ten total. Two D8s. Okay. All right. It is standing, but barely, and it's just kind of like just the bare minimum that is keeping it upright is still intact, but it is. Bull could be the hero. Did you catch a strength modifier there, Dex? Ah, ha, ha. Oh, Thank you. That's gonna, that'll be enough. It has one hit point, so I think your strength hey! mod is going to be Hey! Yeah, that's another two. <laughs> yeah, so you're able to just kind of get... Do you have a war hammer? Is that... Oh, I have a war hammer. I'm smashing its face. Yeah, in. Yeah, you're able to just like push its helmet down into its into its uh, torso plating and just and it just kind of like Russian nesting doll just, just stacks Ooh. upon itself <laughs> and it is now just kind of upright but lifeless and that would mean we are out of combat yes what um, the hell is this what are you doing up here well we heard some glass breaking and uh weren't sure. Cass told me to run. <laughs> I'm just gonna I'm just gonna ignore everyone. I'm gonna <laughs> kinda take a look at Myrna just destroying this thing. Take one look down, twist my trident and just spite stab it just once just once more. Are you before. still hurt, Cass? Uh I'm not great. <laughs> so I'm gonna walk over and put my hand on your shoulder and cast <clears throat> healing word. Or no, no, no. I believe it's Cure Wounds. I don't know. What do you have? <laughs> For five. Bull will fully... I think I already fully stepped out of the room, but for dramatic effect, he will step out of the room again. Like, now, uh... <laughs> I don't know about y'all, but I started a fire in here, and <laughs> we should probably... Why did you, you start know. the fire? Because we are in a devil house. There was a ghost baby, a suit of armor is running around, traipsing around. You're, you're telling me that you, you're currently burning a, boast, a ghost baby? Yes. In a, in a, in a haunted house, uh, according to your words, a, a devil house. Yes, that's right. Does, does that really sound like the smartest idea? Well, I've got feather fall. We can jump out the window. <laughs> so my question right. then becomes, are we going to continue to help these children? I, I think uh, we need to ask some more questions. I think we need to wake the parents. I mean, we are already in the house. Well, let's go down this floor then. What rightful parent puts their baby on the third floor when they sleep on the second? I don't understand. Well, I do want to say that was a ghost baby. There was no baby in the in, in the crib. DM, how many of us heard the children say, oh, the baby's in the basement? <laughs> Did we all hear that since Bull responded? I think me and Avi were already inside. Yeah, most of you, because it was... Before, <laughs> before Kane leaped, but after, I think Myrna, you were probably the last one coming up the stairs as that would have happened. Okay. Um, they, I, I did say they said it quietly, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if anybody else would have heard it besides Bull. Okay. Of course. I'll keep it that way. Okay. Well, I'm rolling. And I think yeah. this is a good time to stop <laughs> <laughs> as we are up against the, the clock here. We, You guys 
bypass levels one and two of this not death house. So we oh. won D and D, right? <laughs> so you won D and D. That's it. You didn't. You missed all the stuff in between. You know, there is a saying: it's about the journey, not the destination. Right? <laughs> so you guys missed the journey, uh, but you made it to the destination. We will pause there. I will level up to two. I think we'll make it happen. Uh, <laughs> this is just so everybody knows. This is milestone leveling. Uh, We'll call it. I think you guys earned it. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I bashed just, in the head of a suit of armor. I love yeah. my level two. I, lo I love I it. I got bashed um, in the head by a suit of armor. Yeah. <laughs> I, I fully prepared tonight having zero combat, and we ended with two. So two. that's good. That you're, You guys are exercising my DM skills, keeping me on my toes. Uh, but there we are. Uh, all right, you guys are here. Uh, we're going to leave off at the third floor. Oh, let me close this sucker out. Um, thanks, everybody, for watching in chat. Um, uh, if you're watching this on YouTube podcast or listening on podcasts, thank you so much. Uh, you can always leave us a review on those podcast side of things. It helps us know that you appreciate what we do. Uh, podcasts or YouTube, too. Check us out. Leave a comment. Let us know how you're liking Curse of Strahd so far. Uh, I'm, I'm having a great time. I think players are as well but we are featherfall tabletop you can find us everywhere at featherfall tabletop check us out um this curse of strad is sponsored by roll 20 roll 20.net um get your digital tabletop needs fulfilled there uh we are sponsored by school splitter dice found familiar coffee featherfall in the checkout saves you 10 percent on all those purchases check those out one shot's coming up we'll plug uh one shot on the 25th with Adam. If you want in one of those, get in our Discord. Let us know. Uh, you can find next stream would be Tuesday with uh, the gods we know uh, at an earlier time, 6-ish. Six, that's, a, that's a hard yes for me. Uh, get there, check them out. Uh, and then we'll be... We got a little bit of a break here with Curse of Strahd. We are going to take two weeks off, I think. Um, Three weeks. Three, three total weeks, because this isn't every other week. Yeah. We cram two together. We're going to stay on that initial schedule. So it'll be three weeks off. Gives me time to prep um, and um, get some other uh, random what encounters. What does that have us coming back? The third or the seventh? The second. I can look that up for sure. The yeah, second? The second. Okay, the second. Yeah, so we're in February. The... Uh, the month of love, as they call it sometimes. Uh, That's I, weird. I don't. I don't. I mean, Valentine's stuff is out in the stores, so Ugh. get it now. Ugh, yeah, yeah. Oh, but anyway, don't. I'm on my soapbox. I'll get off. But thank you, uh, players. Everybody, you guys are awesome. Made it in so much fun. And I appreciate all of you. Any last words by anyone? Great game. This fun. Great game. A lot this of fun. fun. All right. This is going to get interesting. Damn, everyone. <laughs> you guys are like bulls in the china shop, man. Run. We're going to do this. We are taunting dance, though. We have to do this every time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to taunt Strahd from afar. <laughs>